What's going on, y'all? So we are back again for another American Horror Story review, okay? This is American Horror Story season... Ooh, I was about to say season six. Season 11, episode seven, The Sentinel, okay? Now, let me just put this out here because it's one particular person that I always, I, I've always i been seeing um, in the past review, especially last week's reviews. And I'm just like, we... At, at, last week at that time it was episode five and six right and so right about now you should get a sense of what the season is about and i don't know if you really just trying to say that you didn't know because you've been putting the comments for a minute or you just being obtuse because you know probably don't like this season i don't know but let me break it down just in case you don't get it which i don't understand how by this time you don't get it is literally about an actual killer coming out to gay people to make gay people be aware or, or the world to be aware that gay people is there and it's also another killer which is alluding to or you know their version of HIV how HIV is coming around okay and then there's this character called Big Daddy who is literally the embodiment of HIV so basically it's a symbol for it every time somebody got it or close to death or something big daddy shows up somehow in their in their place or around them they can't see him but can nobody else see him because he's not real but he's a symbol of HIV and how people were getting sick and did not know what it was that's what is going on okay and it's all wrapped into like this little horror story which is not really a horror story because it's just real life to be quite honest does that clear up what the season is about you know i mean we're on episode seven right about now but anyway let's just get up into it because girl a mess i did not realize this episode was only 35 minutes i said oh are we coming to the end have there ever been some other episodes of um of American Horror Story who, you know, had um short episodes? I don't remember that. But anyway, it was cute and to the point. I will say that. Baby, it picks up where it left off last week on episode six when we was trying to figure out what Gino gonna do, what Henry gonna do, is Henry gonna come out alive, what is gonna happen. Okay, so at the end of episode six, Gino had called um, you know, uh uh Patrick to come help, okay? He wanted because when the season came, well, I should say when the episode came back on tonight. <laughs> Or episode 7, whenever y'all watched it. When he came back on, Gino was up in that alley behind that bed uh, of the building. And then Patrick come up there. Girl, he said, so this just you? Where the rest of the people at? I would have said the same thing. Now, if I just needed you, child, come on. Like, I would have just might as well call the cops anyway. But Gino, um, not Gino, but Patrick was basically like, now you know damn well they don't give a fuck about this whole shit. And that is the whole premise of this as well. That is the My Thai Killers premise for the person that don't understand what's going on by now. Okay? Um, you know, that's what's going on. And so they go to the building, right? And it's not his building. And at first, I don't know why I thought, maybe because he was in the hospital and he was working in the hospital. And then when he got those two guys that was on the, um, that was following him and they got trapped with him on the elevator. I don't know why I thought that, that, you know, he was going to the basement of his apartment building, doing all this stuff. I don't know why I thought that, mind you. It, the base, I said the basement can't be that goddamn big. That's a big ass basement. It's tall and everything. So of course it makes sense to be in like a warehouse or something. And that's where they were. Baby come the fuck to find out they are in a slaughterhouse. Now if you know me and you've been with me for a minute. Y'all know I used to live over there uh, prior to moving here. I used to live in a neighborhood called Back of the Yards. And that's where the slaughterhouses used to be for the animals and everything. Girl, it's a railroad thing, but it's all the factories back there. You know what I'm saying? So, listen. Imagine just rolling past and smelling that shit. I don't give a damn how many people was up in there or how long it's been. I'm pretty sure that goddamn uh, fucking slaughterhouse still fucking sink. <laughs> you can't tell me no different. Okay? It got to. And I'm sitting here like, you got to be a sick individual to be up in there doing some stupid shit like this. Now, when it came down to what he was doing, it was like, I get it. But at the same time, like, sir, this don't make no sense. What in the sci-fi is going on? But I'm jumping ahead. So, Gino and Patrick get up into the building, right? 
and you know they going through or whatever gino keep on asking all these goddamn questions i'm like gino calm the fuck down just just keep going keep going girl they walked up into the main part of the fucking uh, um building and saw the body on the table you know, and he was stitching up because when the episode first came on, for real, for real, when we saw Whitey, Whitey was up there talking about how um, doing Custer's last stand after they didn't took down the um, Native Americans, took down Custer. Um, you know, one of them put a, a needle in the person's ear so that he can hear better in the afterlife or whatever and listen to what people got to say. I said, you know what? If you look back at the coaches back in the day, Native Americans, you know. Uh, even the Asians and uh, black folks, whatever, Africans. We had so many different sayings, so many different proverbs and everything that just sound, once you once you get the meaning of it, you be like, oh, what? But the way they put it, it just be so profound. I said, now that, that, that's some shit. That's some shit. I ain't never heard nothing like that. I got to look that up. Okay? And next thing you know, we see him sewing up somebody. Yeah, I said, now how they going to hear? I thought it was supposed to bust it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway... That's what was going on, and old boy was still laying on the table when Patrick and Gino came up in there. Whitey was gone, okay? Whitey was gone, and next thing you know, um, they was like, what the fuck? Who would do some sick shit like this? I said, y'all already know, y'all going at the Whitey. That's what it is, okay? You know, next thing you know, Whitey came out of nowhere and popped him in the back of the head with a meat tenderizer. I said, a meat tenderizer? A uh, meat tender. I wear you are in a butcher shop, so okay, maybe that's what it is. You know, that makes sense that that will probably be there. Okay, girl, you wake up, we come back. Patrick is on the table next to that body because, mind you, they was looking at the body come down. Also, that's what threw him off as well because it was the body, the sentinel. You know, he had liquid, he had IV bags and everything on him. I said, what is happening? The thing is dead and it's pissing. What's going on? You know, that's not what was going on, though. Okay, we'll figure it out in a minute. And so when they woke up, the sentinel on the table and um, Patrick on the table next to him, right? And next thing you know, I was like, so where the fuck is Gino and where is Henry? Because they realized Henry was still on the floor and he was still alive, okay? And this was before Whiteley uh, knocked their asses out. But next thing you know, we find out that Gino and Whiteley, they up in the next room, girl. They in a different part of the uh, little, uh, butcher shop or whatever, butcher warehouse. <laughs> Tied up on the table too with handcuffs. I said, uh-uh. Mm-mm. Gino, you making all this goddamn noise or whatever. I don't want to do the help, help. Henry, the only one that's like, nigga, shut up. Okay, shh. Because what if he come up in there? You making all this noise and I get it. You trying to get um the attention of people on the outside. But baby, you in a fucking warehouse-like type of building. And nobody finna hear that right away. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to be screaming your lungs out and ain't no telling how far in you are too. Ain't nobody finna hear that. But what if Whiteley is still there? So therefore, we need to calm the fuck down. But, you know, um, they was just trying to figure out how to get out of this. You know what I'm saying? And then, <laughs> here we going to say... You don't need him. He's way too young for you. He don't this and that ain't no party that you need to be and spend your life with, which that's not the caliber you need. I said, who are you talking about? Girl, I feel like he was talking about Patrick. He was talking about Patrick, right? And cause then Gino was like, oh, shut up. I should have just, I should have talked to him more. I should have listened. I should have been so more forgiven instead of unforgiving and all that stuff. You know, when you about to die or you in a life or death situation or it look like it, you know what I'm saying? Your life flashed before your eyes and the I, I should have, could have, would have started coming through. I said, yeah, Gino, if you wasn't being such a nagger the way that you was doing, you know what I mean? He was nagging this man the whole time, okay? And it was just bothering me. Yes, Patrick was not innocent because Patrick had his secrets. He was cheating. But at the same time, Gino just irritating, okay? He just really irritating. He's an old irritating queen. He right about that. And I'm just like, girl, calm the fuck down, okay? Meanwhile, he was trying to figure out how to get the hell up out that goddamn thing. He up there bamming on the thing. I said, now, Gino, that's all you're going to do. You talk all this stuff and you can't even figure out how to do, how to get the hell out. All you can do is just make noise. Henry said, fuck that. He wound up pulling the handcuffs, right? And trying to see which one would break. Because you know they'd be breaking that thumb and then coming out. And that's what he wound up doing. 
I don't know how he did it, but baby, he pulled this so hard that it broke and all that shit. And so now they was trying to find the key and whatever to get the other handcuffs off so he can get over there and take out Gina or whatever. Baby, he couldn't reach it, girl. He could not reach the shit he was looking for. And next thing you know, he kicked over this table that had a whole bunch of instruments on there, right? So he do one. It's not breaking through the arm um, chains, okay? He trying to cut it. It's not breaking through. He was like, oh my God, the shit is so dull. And then he looked over there to the counter or whatever, and it was a saw. And he was like, oh, you know what? This is where I just draw the line, and I'm just going to stop. You know, I can't do this shit. I'm not about to do this shit. Hell no. Nah. Well, okay, yes. I'm going to go ahead and do it because you know what? This is all my fault. Whiteley is out here doing this shit. I should have seen the shit happening when he first um when we first came through. He wanted to put this. I put this in people's lives, and then plus I knew something was going on. Even if I didn't know that the killer was him, I knew something was going on. You know, our people was just dying, and I just wasn't doing anything, and I could have. I said, oh, so this is gonna pump him up to get that saw, and baby, I'm sitting here thinking like, now if you cut your hand off, you'll bleed out if you don't get out. Or you'll pass the fuck out or you'll die, you get septic and an infection and you die or you still get, you, you, you're still going to get dead. Okay, well, well, what's the point of cutting hand off? But I was like, but then again, you know, you got to try. You got to try. If anything, I would have just broke my other thumb. Okay, baby, I this is not saw. I seen those movies and I just know, don't put me up in the building. I don't want to play no goddamn game. If you're going to kill me, just go ahead and kill me, baby. Because um, Ashley ain't going to give you no resistance at this particular point. All right? It's just it's just not going to happen. I'm just going to be a gunner. That's just what it is. We ain't got to do all this shit. Okay? We ain't got to be so dramatic, you know? But he cut that goddamn hand off, and I said, God damn, you know how, listen, Ashley would have passed the fuck out as soon as the first cut went through like this. And that ain't even to the bone. That's just a couple of layers of meat. You know what I'm saying? And as soon as the blood would have came out, baby, Ashley would have passed out. And that just would have been it. I wouldn't have been able to go all the way through like he did. I've always be like, God damn, how they be doing that? And then they be still. I said, it has to be just the TV. I need to see that in purpose. No, I don't. No, I don't. That's a little bit too much. I'll probably pass the fuck out, okay? That's just not what we gonna do. But um, anyway, so... That wind up happening. I was like, damn, this motherfucker's gonna pass out. What's gonna happen? Girl, over there with uh Mr. Killer, Mr. Killer and Patrick, girl, Square Pants is sitting there on that table and he gagged him, okay? I mean just ball gags him and everything. I said, Oh my god, Patrick, we ain't gonna be able to hear what you gotta say. Girl, Whiteley is doing all this shit because you know they don't see us. He making this sentinel because we need protection and everything that he's doing. He's trying to prove a point about the cops not caring and people not caring. And they're already proving a point because look at the people. They didn't even show up to help him, you know. And so it's just like, this is why I'm doing all this shit. We need to be known. And it's almost like want to be a martyr, you know what I'm saying? Want to be the face of all of this and say that gays are here. And this is something that we've been going through, you know, when people be talking about um, oh, wow, well, all of a sudden it's gay stuff on TV or whatever. It's representation. And that's what we've been trying to fight for. We've not been seen. Now we're being seen. And now it's the issue because we're here. Baby, y'all been here and we ain't say nothing about y'all. We still sit here and look at y'all dry sex. <laughs> Let me stop. I have to laugh at that because some of the shit ain't dry. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put it out there. Some of y'all got some good shit. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. Okay. But um <laughs> That was funny. Anyway, um, I said, girl, I get it. But like Patrick said, so you doing all this shit thinking that a change gonna chunk come? It ain't gonna come. Motherfucker still gonna be the same way. And I said, you showing the fuck right? Cause that's 1981. It's 2022, bitch, girl. Y'all know 2023 coming up in a month. Wow, where did the time go? <sighs> anyway, I felt like I ain't do shit this whole year. And tired at the same time. Like what the fuck? But anyway, he was like, you think this really going to do some shit? It ain't going to change nothing. You are deluge. Okay, that's what you are. You ain't delusional. You deluge. Okay. I said, you know what, Mr. Um, 
Patrick, don't even try to, you can't, you can't reason with a crazy man because later, you know, and he ain't going to apologize to Patrick for knocking him out with the meat tenderizer. <laughs> He said, you know what? And then this sentinel, he needs to be, he said he took pieces of everybody. You know what I'm saying? He basically targeted certain people and he took their best features or whatever, put it on the sentinel. And, um, you know, he trying to, he, the, the one thing that, the last thing that he need is a heart, a heart of somebody that's like good and, and for the people and about that, you know, just an upstanding citizen, you know, that cares and all this stuff and woo, woo, woo. And he was like, Mr. Patrick, that's going to be you. I say, wait a minute, what? We're not gonna do that. Me and Patrick panicked a little bit. I said, "Oh shit, Patrick! Now you gonna get your ass out of this one, bitch." But um, you know that winds up happening, but it didn't because Gino and Henry came in for the rescue. I said, "Good thing." I said, "Damn, Henry, how you get him out of them handcuffs? You ain't had a thumb, and you don't got a hand, bitch." Where well, he did that, and they came in. You know, they had chainsaws or whatever, telling him to fucking stop. And then Patrick, at one point, had got loose, and he put his gun to him or whatever was was pointed it at him. So you got three weapons, you know. And of course, rightly got to go through the reason why he doing all this, and the reason why the Sentinel gonna beat the bomb, and the Sentinel gonna come through and gonna save everybody, and all this stuff. And girl, at this point in time, you know, people don't deserve judgment and everything, and. You know, we don't, and the cops don't give a fuck. You know, it's the same song and dance, right? And I get it, Mr. Whiteley. I get it. We tired. We tired of being persecuted. We tired of getting looked over. We tired of getting disrespected. I get it. That's a lot of us up in here, and it ain't just gay folks. There's a lot of us. But this is not the way to do it. You know, you talking about something. You finna reanimate this man. You had the body on chill. Because, you know, they say that the body can keep on living or whatever past 30, 20 seconds, uh, up to 20 minutes. That's why you got to keep it on ice or whatever. He put it in embalming fluid and he said he going to drain it out once he uh, put his heart up in there and then going to put his own blood in there. I said, this is too much. This is too much to make a goddamn point that ain't going to work. I said, Whitely, you just been reading a little bit too many uh, sci-fi movies. You been looking at some sci-fi movies of the 80s or late 70s or whatever. You been out here... Um, you know, reading too many sci-fi material, you know what I'm saying? Because that's just not going to happen. That's just not going to happen. That's just not how anatomy and everything works, you know what I'm saying? Because if that's the case, we would have been doing that, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, you know? I said, Whiteley, calm the fuck down. This don't even make sense. Girl, Patrick was looking at him and then all of his victims because he was trying to decide whether or not he was going to shoot that motherfucker or not. Get, either get him locked up or he going to shoot him. Now, if he would have got locked up, nobody really would have cared still. Nobody would have really cared, you know what I'm saying? Um, because this is the early ages. Ain't nobody going to care that it was a serial killer out here killing gay folks. They don't care because they don't care about gay folks, you know what I'm saying? So Patrick was looking at him, and then all his victims started popping up. And he said, fuck that. Popped him dead in the head. I said, episode 7, we'd already killed the killer? Damn. Damn. So what's going to be next? <laughs> it's 10 episodes, right? We still got three more to go. I said, so what's going to be next, girl? And then I had to remember, HIV. That's what it is, okay? And basically, there are just, at this point in time, we realized that there is two killers. Now, at one point, I thought it was three, bitch. I thought it was HIV slash AIDS, or I should say HIV or AIDS or HIV and the other side effects that come like the other illnesses that come that probably take you out y'all know that what it is sometimes okay your immune system be so goddamn fucked up that you catch a common cold and you can it could take you out you know what i'm saying um gotta be careful out there gotta be careful out there but i used to think it was hiv slash age in life uh uh the mind tag killer and also goddamn patrick so now what y'all trying to tell me at the end of this episode is just two and we already got one out the way, okay? And so, you know, um, once they didn't took the Mai Tai killer out, baby, uh, of course, Gino was the one that had to write about it in native voice, okay? Because ain't nobody else going to care. That's exactly what I said. They would put they put the, the, the newspapers right next to the uh, main ones, right? And people was all coming to go get the native one. And then also was on the headline was the fact that it was a gay cop. You know, he was caught by New York City's gay cop or whatever. 
and Patrick. So, baby, when Patrick get up out that car trying to go to work, it's so many people out there, reporters and press and everything. He trying to get up in the building. And so, it's a circus. He get up inside the building and on his floor, it's quiet. Nobody even paying attention to him. It's like a regular day up until we see his desk, baby. They didn't do like pink paint or whatever all over his shit. And of course, his, uh, 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 you know, his partner is pissed off, you know, um, because basically the way that the, the, the department was made to look like like we they really didn't give a fuck about people or whatever so of course they're mad they're mad that their truth has been put out there i think you can't be mad at that you really can't meanwhile um you know patrick go up in there to the chief and was like here fuck this shit i know i'm gonna be fired he was like no 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 you're not gonna get fired i just wish you would have told us what was going on you know what i'm saying you ain't have to put all that shit out there you know but we need you to stay on so you can close this case or whatever you know what i'm saying you do what you gotta do and all that and basically he was using him like patrick said you just want me to be the face of this to fix your mess because that's what he said he want he want them he want him to be on board to help fix the shit that's been going on with the department i was sitting here thinking the whole time i know it wasn't just me i swear to god i thought for a few seconds that um the chief was about to say no 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 you're not gonna get fired i'm not gonna do that because um i'm gay too that's what i thought that's what i thought you know what i'm saying um, Cause you know Cal Penn is he's gay in real life, but he was giving me that tease throughout the whole series. Like he was being overly when he do talk about the homophobic stuff, he was being overly homophobic with it. You know what I'm saying? He was making sure we heard those f words and all that shit. You know, and you know I was just waiting for that, but that wasn't it. Patrick said he was like, I'm 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 really sincere about this, and I'm to give you an outreach program that you can go um, be the head of and all this stuff. Girl, Patrick said, oh, so you really sincere? Were you sincere when we told you uh, we got the call about the boy, the 14 year old or the little the teen boy or whatever that was getting beat up or whatever? Did you uh was sincere about this happening? This happened. It was a whole bunch of gay bashing, crime, gay hate crimes that was going on that they basically either turned a blind eye or said that they was gonna do something and didn't do nothing. Patrick called that shit out. Okay. And he said, fuck this shit. Okay. I said, I know that's the fuck right, Patrick. Meanwhile, the second half of the episode comes on. Okay. We didn't got that. The Mai Tai killer is dead. Patrick is out into the whole city and world about his sexuality and a gay cop or now an ex-gay cop. And at one point, Patrick had a fucking breakdown because he didn't realize he, it was just like, what are we going to do? What the fuck are we going to do? Okay. You know, um, I don't have a job. So what's going to happen? I'm out in the world. Everything is scary right about now. It's, it's, it's a disease that's out here. It's just fucking shit up, you know? And we realized that, um, Patrick had, uh, Adam come to see Sully, right? Come down to see if part of that monstrosity that the Sentinel, um, was that to identify any parts of Sully. To see if he was part of this. Because like the center, uh, Whiteley said. He said I took some of their parts. And the parts that I didn't use. I left for the cops to. Uh, to uh, you know. To look at or whatever. To find. And so when Adam went down there. He didn't find anything that looked like Sully. I said that goes to show that you know your friend really well. Okay. Because you, you just looking at different body parts of a whole human body. You know what I'm saying? And it's like it could have been his nipple. You know what I'm saying? And he, no, he said no that ain't his. Okay. I said alright. You know you know your friend. And so now what we're gathering is that the Montai killer did not kill Sully. I said oh so that's what we get from there. You know, okay, cool. And it was so sad that one fact I will say, when Patrick was um, talking to Adam and telling him that he was so brave for coming down there trying to identify Sully or whatever, um, he said, because, do you know, out of, out of all the people that got killed, that we found, and that were part of this whole monstrosity of a person, um, only one family came down to try to identify the remains out of all the people. Only one family came down. And that's just how it be. Y'all saw that shit on post. Y'all saw how it was on post when and when people were dying, the gays was dying, and most of the families didn't even come down there to claim the body or whatever. They was just put off in the unmarked grave that was for the people that passed away for the AIDS. You know? So that was just a lot. That was just a lot. But at this point, you know, Sully ain't killed by the Mai Tai killer. 
Adam don't know what to do. He over there talking to Gino about it. Gino is just like, you know what? You just need to calm down and you need to take a break. Me and my husband had already put a deposit down on a rental house um, out there in Fire Island. And so maybe you should come. He was like, no, it's a whole bunch of shit. I got to be with my people, whatever. He was like, tell your people to come too. I said, wait a minute, what's going on? Y'all can afford this? And he was like, yeah, it's a house, it's a house, it's a house. I said, okay, you know? And so you get... Um, when, when Patrick had that breakdown, he was outside and he was walking and next thing you know, he saw Barbara across the street in all white. You know, it was a hallucination. She came down to him and she was, he was like, this is all my fault. I killed her. That's what he was telling to, um, telling to Gino. And I said, Gino, even though you saying no, 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 baby, what it is, is yes, yes, yes. And I'm sorry to say it like that, but... Um, Patrick, you brought the virus in there and you just spread it to goddamn Barbara because that's what happened to Barbara. Barbara had the virus, okay? Barbara had the virus. Barbara caught a cold and it probably led to some other shit and her immune system is low as shit so it couldn't fight it off and it killed her. That's what fucked around and happened up in that day. Um, to Big Daddy came up in there and said, lights out, bitch. You know, and that's just what happened. That's just what happened. And it's all because of fucking Patrick because he was out there being a hoe. A unprotected hoe at that, you know. So, um, uh, you got Sully and Fran and, um, Hannah and, um, baby, I don't even think he, Theo was there or whatever, but they was just sitting there because what they found out is that, you know, Hannah, she doing some more research and I guess some more time has gone, went past or whatever. And things are developing. A lot of the illnesses are happening to the same people who have the same issues about the blood platelets. Um, blood count being low and then now the platelet counts are being low and out of whack. It's just a lot of things that's happening. And if you look at Hannah as she progressed throughout the episode, she just looks sicker and sicker and sicker. And meaning like, and when I say sicker, I mean like she look clammy. You know, she's losing color. She's just not herself. Towards the end, we saw what it was. You know what I'm saying? But um, she was basically like uh, it's a possibility Sully probably passed away from whatever this was because, you know, he wasn't killed by the Mai Tai killer and, you know, he was one of her first patients, okay? So, everybody's getting sick and, um, she said half the people that she, uh, already treated or looked at this that had this early on can't find them because, you know, Sully was just like, it's not, I mean, not Sully, but Adam was like, it's not a killer. It's not just one killer out there. Okay. We got the Mai Tai now something else. This virus. This is what they was talking about when they was all together. And so they trying to get awareness out there to the peoples and everything. And so they going to write some write some uh stuff for the vid the native and they going to go out there to Fire Island and all that shit. Baby before Hannah can even get ready to go out there as she was getting ready. Her her progression went on. Okay. It it came kind of quick for a second. You know what I'm saying? Um, she was up in her own um, place, girl, and she was trying to get ready, and she had to hurry up and go throw up. Now, see, Hannah, girl, I know you a little sick. I know you a little sick, right? Um, but what I'm going to be honest and tell you, girlfriend, I ain't appreciate the fact that you threw up in that sink. <laughs> you threw up in that sink, and you didn't even turn the water on, and if you did, I don't recall, okay? I don't recall, you know? And so at this point, um, she gets on the phone and she called her friend. She called Adam and told him, listen, baby boy, um, I just not going to be able to make it to this whole beach day or whatever because fire island because I'm a little sick, you know, pregnancy sick, you know. And so next thing you know, she hangs up. Then she feels like she just looks so clammy and out of it. And um, she calls her mama and she said, mama, I know it's been a long time since I seen you or whatever, but um. It's some stuff that's going around out here. You know, I just been a little bit lonely working a lot. I'm pregnant. There's some stuff going on around here. And I think that I got it. A virus. My immune system is extra, extra low. And, um, you know, I, I, I just want to be with you while I'm sick right now. And I was like, okay, I'll see you soon. You know? And then we saw Big Daddy up in the, in the, um, in the window, outside the window. So what it seems to be happening is... Big Daddy, aka HIV slash AIDS or whatever else the uh, other illnesses that came with it because the immune system was low. Autoimmune disease is just fucking people up and they don't know what it is. And they all got it. They all got it. And 
Montana got it because she had unprotected sex, most likely with um, Patrick. Not Patrick, but Adam. Okay. Adam probably got it from Sully. Because they looked like they was doing some shit together already when we first saw them. They was a little too comfy. He probably got it from Sully. Okay. We already know Gino got it from Patrick. All right. And Barbara got it from Patrick. Um, and Big Daddy is just going to be making house calls. Big Daddy is going to be making house calls. And at this point in the show, I feel like when Big Daddy shows up, that means you're about to die. That's what it means for real, for real. Because um, the last few people that Big Daddy showed up to, they did. Okay, I just want y'all to know that. But that was um episode seven. Girl, it was good. It was good. I don't care. Maybe because I'm high. I don't know. It was good. I like it. Y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. I'll see y'all later for episode eight. Peace.